Hello, and welcome to Sounds Heal Podcast. I am your host, Natalie Brown, and thank you so much for joining me as we continue to explore the fields of sound healing, sound therapy, and generally the use of sound for health and wellness. You can always find out what's going on and what's coming up next at soundshealstudio.com. And I'm very excited to announce that I'm redesigning my website and that will be launched. That new version of soundshealstudio.com will be launched in mid-November. So please check that out. Today, our guest is Mandara Cromwell, a doctorate of cymatic medicine, an entrepreneur and inventor, and we discuss highlights of her background, those things that led to transformation in her life and drew her into signs, symbols, and bringing the realms of science and spirit of sound together. She manufactures her own inventions the AMI Acoustic Meridian Intelligence Devices and the AMI 750 is an advanced sound technology device, which was nominated for the Thomas Edison Award for Innovation in the Fields of Science and Medicine in 2013. And now there's a new version of that device, AMI 750. So we learn all about what is AMI, what is cymotherapy, which is a term that she coined to refer to the wave therapy based on the work of Dr. Manners, whom she studied with extensively. And also as a way of really kind of bringing vibrational medicine and specifically sound therapy to the forefront, she founded ISTA, the International Sound Therapy Association, since 2006, the organization has been offering conferences and kind of really trying to bring this field uh, to a higher level. Um, so we talk about this field of sound healing and how it's changed so much since she's been involved and really discuss the development. And we also talk about her experience, her continued learning and growth, and what part of her work is important to her right now. So really interesting discussion about sacred geometry and cymatics, her devices and how they've been successful, how they've helped so many people. So a fascinating discussion with Mandara. This podcast is sponsored by the Ohm Shop and Spa located in Sarasota, Florida, also online at theohmshop.com. They are the United States's largest showroom uh, vibrational tools, all kinds of amazing custom instruments, and a huge variety of crystal singing bowls, Himalayan bowls, gongs, tuning forks, as well as a luxury spa, trainings and workshops, really a beautiful place in Sarasota, Florida, but they also have so many resources and can help you uh, with finding your next sound healing tool or instrument at theomshop.com. So thank you so much to the Ohm Shop for their support and sponsorship of this podcast. Please enjoy this episode with Mondara Cromwell. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Mandara, for being here with me to kind of discuss your, your journey and your projects and your amazing work you've been doing. Thanks so much for being part of this podcast. Oh, thank you, Natalie. It's lovely to be here with you. So I'd love to uh, go backwards in time and actually start with your background a bit. And if you could kind of think back, maybe there's moments when you were young that stand out, that were really kind of sparks that led you uh, into this work uh, in the merging of sound and spirit. Uh, when I kind of ask that, are there any, is there anything that sticks out that was really transformative when you were young that led you on this path? Yes, um, I was um, so grateful to have a grandmother who encouraged and nurtured my intuitive and experiential side of being in nature. She had this gorgeous rose garden and she would talk to her the roses and, and you know, it seemed they would answer her uh, that she had this, you know, 
really special relationship with uh, communicating with the natural world. And um, as a child, I had a lot of mystical experiences within the Catholic church, which the uh, architecture of the church that my family attended was Gothic architecture. So those buttresses and arcs and the elaborate paintings of the angels on the ceilings and their halos with those little squiggly lines were my first cymatics experience. Of course, I didn't know that's what I was looking at back then. But, um, you know, the whole church was this vibrational cavity. And then when the pipe organ played the, uh, the Latin mass, everything came to life. I mean, things were dancing and, and um, it was quite an experience for me. And I remember one day being in the garden with my grandmother, sharing with her some of my experiences. And at some point she said, you know, maybe it's good that you just keep this to yourself and not share it with all your friends because not everybody has the same experience that you have that we all come here with our special gifts and our special way of receiving information and you have found your way but sometimes it takes other people a while to connect to their communication pathways so that was a big lesson for me um, as a child growing up. But from that point, I was always interested in art and architecture that had those types of symbols. And uh, then in college, you know, took lots of art courses, courses got, a, got a degree in, in art history and discovered after um, college, when I went to India, that there's another type of holy spot that their temples were similar in some way to the Gothic style architecture. So that thread has continued through my whole life. So what brought you to India? Uh, what drew you there? And um, what did you notice were some of the similarities, uh, maybe kind of sonically in some of the, the sound work that was happening there too? Oh, there was a lot. My, um, I tell people the reason I uh, went to India after college is because in college I took some philosophy courses. And when we got into Eastern philosophy, it just seemed to resonate with me. And there was this saying back then that if you really want to know the truths of the universe, go to India and seek the wise and holy men and women who hold the secrets to the universe. And uh, so anyway, I uh, embarked on that, but that <laughs> was my next stop. And as I mentioned just a, a moment ago, the architecture of the Indian temples, and there are various styles within and all throughout India, but the thing they all share, um, are, are, are the domes and, and certain arcs, like in Gothic architecture. And when you go into these temples, whether they be very large or small, and you stand underneath those domes, when you become very quiet, or when I would become very quiet, I could feel the vibrations. And it was like I was receiving a sonic realignment from that vibratory field that that architecture provided. And then when the priests would come in and begin chanting the Sanskrit prayers, that would amplify those feelings. And the, um, the columns within the temples, the, um, the, how they have all of the, um, the, the um, carvings in the walls, all of those are on mathematical proportions. And then I learned that those secrets actually are written in the Vedic texts of how to actually construct a structure uh, to harness the energies in our natural world and to come into that vibration, that coherence of body, mind, and spirit. 
And so it was pretty profound. So when I was in India, I, um, I did live in an ashram, a spiritual community. And the teacher, when people were struggling with some emo emotional turmoil, they were always directed to just go sit in the temple. And the power of sitting in that geometry allows one to become instantly calm. And when we remove ourselves from the <laughs> that little monkey mind and can really drop into the perspective of the observer, we have the lesson very quickly. So that's the power of, of those geometries and those, that type of architecture. In Ayurveda, what, and I studied Ayurveda while I was there, um, they, um, uh, we, we have the, um, uh, the five bodies, the physical body and, and the four subtle bodies. So the goal is to live life on this beautiful planet in coherence of all those five bodies. So when one gets out of sync or, you know, we're experiencing the stress, then Ayurveda perceives that as an opportunity to find our way back to our, our spiritual path, our, our connectedness to the divine. And uh, so that, that all of those are pretty profound insights for me at, as a young adult and, and, and postgraduate years. Right. It's really this merging and aha moments of sound, spirit, sacred geometry. Um, it must have just been so inspiring um, seeking these things out and, and really being um, amazed by that. So what was next? Uh, you obviously um, were leaning, starting to lean into your mission, but what took you next? Well, I came back to the United States and ran a meditation center because that meditation is the quickest way that people can get in into a stress-free zone. And so I ran a meditation center teaching people how to meditate, uh, different forms of meditation using uh, mantras, which was very easy as, as using that as a, a tool to kind of calm the monkey mind and, and uh, get into that calm state. And I remember at that time, um, back in um, India, where we would gaze at certain geometries and and this particular yogic technique is called drishti where you have this focused gaze and you um, look into a, a specific yantra a geometric design and uh, we learn this technique to in, in particular to the with the sri yantra to access higher states of consciousness and i always had this thought, I wish I could make that live and dynamic for my meditation students so they could really see the power of the mantra that creates that yantra because the mantra, the, the yantra is the, the spoken um, expression of the word. And uh, so I, I did that. And, and uh, of course, back at that time, there wasn't a lot of, <laughs> a lot of um, favorable things about yoga and um, meditation, except for in certain um, areas. And, uh, and I was in Atlanta, Georgia at the time. And, and um, there were some people who were really interested in this, and, and I had a couple of medical doctors who were referring their patients to me because they knew the power of calming the mind and its um, um, association with uh, cortisol, high cortisol, high stressors, et cetera. But um, I, um, so, since it wasn't a, a big uh, income producing, <laughs> <laughs> I did need to put bread on the table. So uh, I did go into corporate America and balance those two um, tracks simultaneously, having my meditation yoga students on one hand and then um, 
by day going into the corporate world and being somewhat normal. <laughs> and um, decades later, I uh, came, uh, uh, I started my own consulting business. And uh, one day received a phone call from a person who uh, was a massage therapist. And he began talking to me uh, about his path on sound and vibration. And he had studied the yogic texts and, and practiced yoga. And so we had a, a great connectivity there. But then he introduced me to Dr. Peter Guy Manners who was a British osteopath. And so this massage therapist was telling me that he studied for five years in the Cotswolds with Dr. Manners using this sound box to help people come back into alignment. And I was like, wow, that might be a little faster than mantra. <laughs> so uh, that was my, my next chapter. And that was back in 2001 and went and met him. Yeah, maybe uh, tell us a little bit about him and kind of his background, but also his development of that sound box. Let's kind of talk about that development but before you're kind of taking that on. Sure. Um, he was, uh, well, of course, after I um, learned about this and, and it was Hans Yenny. Hans Yeni was had had come a little bit awareness had come a bit before then, and so I'll start with Hans Yeni in the sense that you know there were these um, amazing videos of Hans Yeni's experiments, and he was the first person to coin the term cymatics, which uh, was based on the Greek word kima, which means wave. And um, his experiments, when I saw them, I thought, oh my goodness, if I only had this to show my meditation students, they could see the power that sound really has at a cellular level, as well as in the macrocosm. So um, we were talking about uh, a, a Dr. Manners and he named his therapy cymatic therapy. So immediately I thought, oh my goodness, there's this box. Okay, so th this is me before meeting him. I had I had this brewing in my imagination that there was a box emitting these healing sounds and that it was also creating the images, the cymatic images of those healing sounds. And I thought, oh my gosh, this would be so amazing to experience, to witness, to really know more about. And so as soon as I hung up, I actually had this, um, this mystical experience because when I was hanging up the telephone from this massage therapist, I said, well, thank you for calling me and sharing all this information with me. Um, how can I help you? And he said, I don't know. All I know is that Dr. Manners is in the twilight of his life. And uh, he's going to leave the planet. And nobody's going to know his information. So I said, okay, well, let me think about this. And when I hung the uh, phone up into the receiver, immediately the wall to my office blew out. And there was this amazing uh, mystical being before me. And I felt this profound tap on my thoracic spine, like, hey, Mandara, it's your turn. You, you need to do something about this. So back then, we the internet was around. And so I began searching the internet. And I uh, came up with Jeff Volk, who had translated Dr. Yenny's book into English. And so, of course, I immediately ordered that. And it turned out that Jeff had met Dr. Manners before. So, of course, immediately I interviewed him and say, tell me all about him, tell me about this sound box, et cetera. And he said, well, Mandara, the device does not make these sounds visible, but it does emit these frequency tones in a particular format that seem to have quite an effect on the physical uh, body. So I then, after hanging up uh, with Jeff, called Dr. Manners in England, and he answered the phone. 
in his clinic. So you have to understand at this time, Dr. Manners was in the twilight of his life. I mean, when I did meet him, he was 97 years old and moved like a 30 year old, had a full head of hair, very clear eyes, um, just quick witted. And um, so anyway, I set up a, a time to, to go and study with him. And so I'm going to uh, jump over to his history so you can understand a little bit from that branch of this tree. Um, he was the last living member of a collaborative group of scientists and researchers after the Second World War. So after the war, so he had been studying, uh, you know, uh, his had his medical degrees, et cetera, and his counselors, um, mentors said that he would probably be more well suited to research. And so that put him on the research of not only in Western style medicine, but also exploring the vibrational fields of redesthesia, of radionics, and those types of, of devices that were coming, uh, becoming available during that time. And so after the war, he had heard that the Germans who were in the laboratory were really looking at sound and how to help people. Of course, there were a lot of experiments going on during the Nazi years, and not all of them were um, terrible. So this was a group who were really dedicated to medicine and advancing these vibrational energy medicine pathways. And so he picked up and, and went to Germany and was there for uh, quite a few years and then brought that information back to uh, the Cotswolds where he started his own clinic. And, uh, and he was married at the time uh, to his wife, Maria, and they practiced together and the Cotswolds. And um, that was what drew me to find him. Now, when I did meet him, um, his wife, uh, Maria had recently passed and uh, so he was, um, you know, whenever we experience loss in our life, it kind of puts us in a different cymatic pattern, so to speak. I always uh, use this analogy when I share with people who are using my devices that uh, when things are, um, um, they're having a, a different experience than they, they normally do, that it's like that plate with all of the sand particles on it and they uh, make the tone from the transducer underneath and there's this beautiful geometry. But when you turn the, the knob and the um, sound is either increased or decreased, all of the sand particles jump into the air and it's when they're in that motion and that upper oscillation, <laughs> that phasing there, that we have the opportunity, we have windows to change or maybe surrender to what the new form of geometry manifests on the plate when it stops. And so when we experience a trauma or a shift in consciousness, that geometry changes and we have the, these windows to, to stop and say, okay, how am I perceiving the world now? What, how, you know, what, what, is, what is happening within all my five bodies at this point? And so I would say at that particular time in Dr. Manner's life, after, you know, losing his wife, you know, it takes a little while to examine where are we, what's important to us, um, how do we function now that this big part of our life has transformed uh, or transcended into uh, an invisible world. So he, at that point, stopped doing research. And then when I met him, I was just, I came just as a student, as other people were coming to him and studying with him. 
But the thing that was different about my trip there is I noticed that he was having difficulty with his manufacturer. Before I made the trip to England, I told him, I said, you know, I want to order one of your devices, you know, here, do you need me to send the money ahead? Here it is. Um, and so I noticed when I asked him every day, where's my device? You know, I, I want to take it back to the hotel and <laughs> experiment with this. See, see how can I make this work? And he would get kind of bristly and, and all <laughs> shift into another pattern, so to speak. And so finally, by the fourth day, I, I figured something was going on. About three o'clock every afternoon, there's tea time. And we always observe tea time. Um, someone would come, a gentleman would come into the clinic and he and Dr. Manners would go into the office and close the door. And I could hear raised voices. I couldn't understand what they were saying, but I began to put two and two together. So I invited Dr. Manners to dinner on the fifth day. And uh, so we were at the, the restaurant and I told him, I said, you know, I um, don't mean to pry, but I wanted to just ask you, are you having difficulty with manufacturing? And he got all closed down, the shoulders came up by the ears and his lips pursed. And so I immediately said, if you are, and if you would be interested in bringing the manufacturing to the United States, I have connections there. And he immediately went from this to this open full blossom and said, I've been waiting for you. Now he wasn't waiting for me specifically, but he was waiting for someone to appear to help him out of whatever conundrum he was in at the time. And so that was uh, the beginning of our student-teacher <laughs> yeah. relationship and our business relationship. Right. And the beginning of your branch of, of that work. Yeah. So, so you, obviously you did bring it, but you did bring it manufacturing to the States. And so uh, how did that relationship develop and how did it kind of be, become your own? developments because now you you've had several models of this work so how has it shifted from then <laughs> so to um I, I it was really important for me at the time to honor dr manners and his life's work and uh, i really um uh, pulled together a, a team of people to spearhead the creation of the sima 1000 uh and the sima 1000 was very well, had some similarities similarities to the device that he had been working with. And um, I, I did ask him at the time, I said, do you think this model could ever be taught to homeowners? Because it's so wonderful to be able to have a device that you can utilize yourself in the privacy of your own home and have it not be too difficult to understand. And he said, oh no, you could never do this. People would never get it. And so all the while in the back of my head, I thought, listen, this has got to get, I, because in the clinic with him and all the times that I was with him throughout the years, it, being with him in his clinic, I saw marvelous th uh, therapeutic results. And I would just go, people need to have this. It's a non-invasive way. You know, here in the West, drugs and surgery are the first thing that the doctors prescribe. And wouldn't it be great if we might have something before then, before those, you know, really um, severe <laughs> approaches? <laughs> because they can be, you know, drugs have, a, a profound uh, side effects and, and surgery with the, you know, all of that. So um, 
he said, no, it was just too difficult to learn. So I manufactured the Simon 1000. And as I was training people to utilize that particular device in the United States, I saw quickly what he meant. The learning curve was way too steep. People just couldn't grasp what, you know, how, if they were medical doctors, whether they be psychiatrists or, or oncologists or um, integrative physicians, uh, all across the board, they did not have time to learn this new mindset. So after, um, you might remember 2008, uh, where we had this huge economic crash. And so the manufacturer that I was using at that time came to me and said, Mandara, we're not going to manufacture this device any longer. First of all, the parts are becoming obsolete. And he said, the economy is changing. You are our only tech person. And we're not going to keep the staff to do all the, the processing, et cetera. And so that was the beginning of my dark night of the soul. And I wrote about this in my book. So if people want to read the details of, wow, what, what do I do? You know, every now and then life hits us with the two by four and we end up on the floor in a fetal position, gasping for breath. And that was my six months of trying to sort things out. How, how do I do this? What do I do? Have, have I fallen off the path? Where, where is that? You know, because up until that time in my life, one step had been become pretty clear right after the other. You know, I would, you know, it, from my corporate life, it was easy to transition into um, a, a consulting position. And, but this was like the rug had truly been pulled out from under me. And so it took me a while to say, I'm going to do this differently. So my cymatic plate, all of those <laughs> particles were up in the air, oscillating in, ter in turmoil from my perspective at the time. But as soon as I grasped hold of one of those particles and said, what is it? What truth do I know? You, you just go back to the center of, you know, what do I know? What is real? And it started coming to me, Natalie, about my studies in Ayurveda. And at that time, I had also incorporated Chinese medicine, where I had these visions of this new device. And of course, that device manifests as the AMI 750, where I took the, the protocols and made them, you know, I went through all my journals of everything that worked. And we can talk about the, the success stories I had in the clinic in just a moment, if you like. But I looked at all of the protocols that really worked across the board. I packaged those in something called the SIMA 10, the 10 most magnificent protocols that will help everyone with their health start climbing out of the conundrums of what's going on with me and why can't I heal. So. Um, I created the AMI 750, which is a foot plate. So you put, you sit in a chair and you put your feet on it and the sound travels through the meridian pathways all throughout the body. And, uh, people can go to my website and see the thermal images where through the feet, the sound is actually affecting all through the torso, every tissue up into the oral cavity and, uh, you know, up into, um, the, the, uh, the cranial, the everything. So, uh, so I would go, wow, this really works. And then of course, everything has its season, the AMI 750, um, those parts became obsolete. And that was another world changing event with, um, the COVID years. And, um, so I just want to touch back to the manufacturer that said, we're not going to, then I realized I had to do my own manufacturing. So when I recreated the, uh, the new AMI 750, I brought manufacturing into, so I, had, I wasn't gonna have that happen to me again, where somebody came to me and said, oh, sorry, we're not doing this anymore. So um, 
with that, in, in 2019, I don't know if you remember this, in the fall of 2019, in the, and I don't pay attention to the news a whole lot because, you know, it's the, the doom and gloom channel. <laughs> Those aren't very good for our, our immune system, <laughs> our stress levels. So, you know, you begin to hear in the world, there's some wonkiness happening. And so I ordered enough parts for the AMI 750 to last me for two years. So I thought, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna weather this storm by being prepared because the weatherman is saying there's bumpy times coming. Well, when COVID hit, the silver lining to that pandemic is that suddenly everyone said, oh my gosh, I need to take my own health and be responsible. I can't just call the doctor and say, what prescription have you got this? What have you got for that? Uh, you know, I need to, you know, if I can't go anywhere, I need to have tools with me in my own home. So my, all of my two years of inventory went in six months. So suddenly I was back <laughs> to the same place I was in 2008 and the beginning of 2009. So it's been an interesting journey. And uh, so earlier this year, we came out with the AMI 850, which is the next evolution of the 7. Yeah, so um, let's let's go a little deeper into that. So AMI, Acoustic Meridian Intelligent, Intelligence, right? And so maybe um, for people that haven't looked into this yet, um, what kinds of things um, have you seen success with that it's treating? I know you have the 500 and 850. Maybe you could talk about the difference of those and their usages just a little bit. Sure. Um, so our, our FDA classification is uh, a class one device, which means that you don't need a prescription to own one. And what we can claim is that we relieve stress and pain. So for people who come to us, and I just recently wrote a, a blog article on um, do you have the frequencies for fill in the blank? Do you have the frequencies for Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Lyme, um, cancer, eczema, psoriasis, you know, various autoimmune conditions? Do you have the frequencies for that? You know, people send in uh, or, or on webinars, they'll, they'll ask that. And so the answer is yes, we have the frequencies for everything. However, it's just not knowing what those frequencies are because we are treating when in, in natural medicine, we're treating the body as a whole. So, you know, if you are having digestive troubles, there are a lot of components to the digestive system. And yes, we have frequencies for all of those components. But then we also need to look at other parts of the body where the, is the digestive, the expressive point and the root of the cause is maybe someplace else. So what I've done with layering these 30 minute protocols that are all in the um, 20 channels that come on, on the AMI 850, each, each protocol is 30 minutes in length. So what I've done is I've taken, taken specific body systems that are very stressed, or maybe you're experiencing physical or emotional pain in that area. And I've layered the frequencies, I call it AMI frequency patterning, so that there will be a release of stressful tension in that area. So um, that gives way once we relieve the stress, say in the digestive area, then that gives the uh, body uh, an, an opportunity to send the 
energy to another part of the body that may really need it. Or in the case of the digestive tract, it's calming everything down so that we can actually absorb the nutrients in the food that we're eating. A byproduct of uh, using um, the, the stress channel, um, well, I'll go to that channel because that's channel number one. Everybody can benefit from channel one. When, when people order a device, they say, oh, what should I do when I get, just start with channel one because we're all stressed out. <laughs> but what happens when you begin to relax, other systems in the body don't feel like they have to take up the burden of the system that's being really impacted. So then the whole body starts regaining its tune. It's kind of like a, an orchestral symphony um, where you know one section is out of tune and then when it comes back in tune, everybody else can, can doesn't have to compensate for somebody over there that got, <laughs> got out of tune. And so, you know, relieving, if, if you think about it, all of those conditions that I listed previously cause stress and pain for the person who has received that diagnosis. Yeah, so um, with the 750, maybe you can um, mention some of the, the successes or, or what you saw in, in the clinical work with that that people experienced. I'm, I'm sure it's so wide ranging, so just a few instances if you want. It is, it is. So um, with the 750, um, first of all, the reason it is called AMI is because that acronym came to me in that dark night of the soul. When I was for six months, you know, laying on the floor, what do I do with all these people who already have my devices? You know, how do I help them? Uh, how do I help the people that need help? I've always had this underlying um, desire since childhood to help people with their health. And um, so that acronym AMI came and, and, and I, you know, at one point, and that time's like, what does that stand for? And then I realized it was acoustic meridian intelligence. So the, the sounds that are emitted from my device, they are audible. They're all in the audible range. And so this is very different than ultra or infrasound. So, um, so it's acoustic sound and it travels the meridian pathways. And it uses the body's innate intelligence to take that sound wherever it's needed. And so now I'll share a interesting story. There is a um, actually a practitioner whose husband had stubbed his toe and he didn't tell her about it for, <laughs> for a few days. <laughs> you know, a guy thing, like <laughs> I can suck it up and... <laughs> hobble along here. And finally, she said, what, why are you hobbling? And he said, well, I stubbed my toe and it's just not getting any better. And so she said, well, here, you know, sit here with your, your feet on the, the device on the AMI 750. And um, we'll, we'll try this. And so she, she turns the device on and he goes, oh, I don't feel this in my toe at all. And so in a way that's kind of surprising because it's right there on your feet. And he, he, she goes, well, do you feel it anywhere? He said, yes, I feel it in my hip. And she said, well, what happened to your, your hip? And he said, well, I injured it, you know, and, and told her about something that had happened 10 years ago. And then he goes, oh, wait, now I feel it in my shoulder. And she's, well, what happened to your shoulder? And he said, well, when I was in the military, like 40 years ago, I jumped off a truck with his, his pack on and, and landed and, and hurt his shoulder. And there was built up scar tissue and whatever there. He said, I feel it there. And she said, well, what about your toe? He said, no, I don't feel it in my toe. And finally he says, oh, now I feel it in my knee. And she said, well, what did you do with your knee? And he said, oh, I was in a ski accident, you know, 18 years ago or whatever. So the sound was going to all of these places 
the body is innately intelligent to open the circuits where there are constriction points and to allow that energy to flow. Finally, by the end of the 30 minutes, he could feel it in that stub toe. So after, uh, I think it was about three or four sessions in, in, in the coming days that the issue was resolved, but I found it very interesting that here was a, uh, a person who identified firsthand where all of the, the sounds were going within the body. I love that. And it really kind of comes back to your initial point on, on these devices that, you know, people come to you with various diagnosis or labels of conditions and, you know, what, what do you have that can treat it? And that's almost the, the pharmaceutical model, isn't it? That, you know, do you have the exact thing for this diagnosis, but um, that this just kind of is more of a whole body experience. And, and, and he really felt it that way, that it was actually all these different patterns and places that he was holding um and then eventually it kind of resolved to his current issue but yeah that, that's really fascinating um maybe what are um besides the the stress number one what are a couple other uh things uh, on the list that it, it tends to uh, oh, offer absolutely. people the common things yeah yeah um okay so channel two is pain uh, in um muscle skeletal pain so this is great for athletes and, and um, um, well, anybody who has joint pain is, uh, is, is great. Um, as a matter of fact, just a couple months ago, I tore my meniscus. I got to use it myself. And um, it's, um, it's amazing, Natalie, when um, a, a friend of mine called me when I was wobbling into, or a, a neighbor actually, and, and she, I was, she said, I see you hobbling into the house. Did you hurt yourself? And I said, yes, I was trying to wheel the queen mattress up a flight of stairs. <laughs> and she said, well, can I come over? Can I bring you some Advil, ibuprofen? What, I mean, whatever uh, is out there over the counter. I said, oh, I said, I, I, I have all that because, you know, I didn't want to get into, oh, I'm going to go get, I'm going to go use sound. <laughs> so, um, for three days, I will tell you that I was on crutches because we need to be, we can't just say, I'm going to do this sound and in 30 minutes, I'm going to be totally rejuvenated. Uh, that is the Western model. Doctor, give me a pill and in 20 minutes, I'm going to be brand new and that's going to be shoved in the closet, right? No, in natural medicine, what we do is we go, oh, let me slow down body. Let me be nice to you. Let me love on you. And I'm going to play this sound for you. And so by the end of 10 days, I was walking all around the neighborhood and, and I actually have a, a um, friend who is also helps me with some research who's an ultrasonographer. And so she has her own ultrasound equipment and she comes over and she goes, yep, you tore that meniscus, Mandara. That's, that's exactly what it is. She said, you're going to go have surgery? And I said, no, <laughs> I'm getting on my sound. So I will tell you that when our, our first choice is a natural method, maybe we could try that first rather than, you know, signing on the dotted line that you're going into surgery in 24 hours to have something else done. So that's channel two. I, I have a lot of personal experience with channel two because sometimes I uh, forget the limitations of the physical body. Oh, hey, the leg doesn't bend that way. Um, and then channel three is for inflammatory pain. I wanna really stress how key this is because chronic inflammation is at the base of all degenerative disease, whether you have um, arthritis, autoimmune, um, cancer, um, if you're recovering from a stroke or whatever it is, we all are battling chronic inflammation. We battle chronic inflammation in our gut because of most of us, unless you are out where there's no stress um, and you're eating all of the wonderful fresh foods and not partaking in processed foods and, and those types of things um, that cause that inflammatory cycle. So channel three is a really uh, big one that helps a lot of people. Channel four is for vitality. And uh, that is um, 
really great for people who just can't get out of bed. We have a lot of people who feel very lethargic these days. We're bombarded by all of the environmental frequencies that are unfavorable. Um, we call them non-native uh, frequencies that uh, are having a huge impact. And so this really slows down uh, everything, even at the cellular level. And when our cells are so stressed, they go to sleep. They just say, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling the covers over my head and I'm not getting out today. And so the vitality channel uh, coaxes them. And so they wake up and, and uh, begin their, their cellular dance of taking in nutrition and excreting metabolic waste in an efficient manner. And then channel five is uh, anti-aging. And I created this based on the five elements of Chinese medicine. This has um, a, um, it's like a tonifying effect to all the organ systems. And this, I'll, I'll pause here just for a second, Natalie, to tell you that each of the uh, codes in a 30 minute protocol consists of five frequencies. So for example, in this anti-aging protocol, the liver has its very own special quintet that plays to it. And the gallbladder has its special quintet, the kidney, the spleen, the pancreas, the bladder, uh, the heart, the small intestine, the large intestine, the lungs, we all, that they all have their very own special quintet. So that when that song comes on, uh, for example, the lungs go, yay, thank you. I really like this. Uh, we'll move on to channel six is great for the immune system. Channel seven is for the respiratory system. Um, in those two channels, we have a lot of oxygenating um, codes. And oxygen is, is really key right now because we live, first of all, in an environment that's really depressed. We're just not getting enough oxygen. Then we are living um, with this lifestyle that a lot of people are sitting all day long. You know, they say sitting is the new smoking. And what happens is our, our torso is crunched. And so we, we never even get to the diaphragm. You know, the, the diaphragm is all cr crunched up and it just can't, we, so I always tell people what, what you know, they ask me, what, what's one thing I can do every day to help myself? I go, reach your arms up to the sky, take in 10 really wonderful breaths and really feel the stretch in your torso because things get all gummed up in there in this computer <laughs> lifestyle that we have. So channel six and channel seven are great. Channel eight is for the cardiovascular system, channel nine, digestive, channel 10 for the nervous system. And so there is a lot about the vagus nerve going on uh, out there right now. And so channel 10 is, is uh, exceptionally uh, good for that. Uh, we have 10 other channels that uh, kind of are the next octave of that for toxicity and, and cellular dance and bone fitness. Is we have a lot of aging people who somehow or another, they need a little help with their bone density. So I would like to point out right here that we're not... These frequencies are um, offering the body an opportunity to come into balance. In Chinese medicine and Ayurveda, we're always looking at how do we bring the body in balance. And there are certain systems that are in excess, which means they're really revved up all of the time. And then there are other systems that are deficient. And it's usually a lot of times the ones that are real revved up are trying to compensate for those systems that are depleted. And so the whole idea of this sound system of all of these frequencies coming together is to relax the whole body in a particular way that it comes more into balance. So I hope, hope that's clear. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense, especially based on the Chinese meridian system and how we can get that surplus of energy or stagnant energy and just moving, moving the chi and, and just almost a reset. Yeah. A purification. Yeah. Well, beautiful. I mean, sounds like such a versatile tool for people. And so I guess I'm 
I'm kind of curious with your development, what are you, what are you seeing with current research, whether it involves you or not with kind of simotherapy, but also with your own development of, of these, you know, products, what's the current research right now? Okay. Well, um, uh, you know, John Reed is a, a longtime friend and colleague of mine, and he uh, has done some interesting research in his laboratory with uh, the evidence of the increase in oxygen at the cellular level and the increase of cell um, vitality, which it really leads to how the cells come back to that active phase of being back in the dance instead of just being sluggish and going to sleep and you know not participating they have more viability and so that means that the cells can take in nutrition and and, and excrete metabolic waste their their dance is uh, for their life you know because we have a, a main five main stages of of mitosis and that last stage is aptosis where we do, we, we want the cell to go ahead and uh, it's done its job and, and we say goodbye to it and have the new cells come in. And um, so that um, cell viability uh, increased with these frequencies 365%. Yeah, that was really uh, quite a, a fantastic result. Did not uh, expect that at all. Um, Dr. Beverly Rubick has done some research with um, live blood cell uh, microscopy, where with the stress relief channel alone, the white blood cells that were very lethargic after just one session became active again, which means, and, and we need our white blood cells, particularly uh, during this time where uh, we have all of the stagnation, we need that lymph system to be cleaning up, sending all those white blood cells around to, to scavenge and, and um, uh, maintain their uh, surveillance that what, what's being dumped into the lymph system and gobbling up all cells that maybe gone, have gone rogue and, and uh, things that are toxic, we need to move them on out. So those white blood cells, we need them to be quite active. Uh, just this uh, tomorrow, I had started a two-day study with uh, more live blood cell uh, analysis. So we have um, two days of, of looking at live blood under a high-powered microscope with 10 different subjects. And so hopefully that information will be compiled and, and be able to be um, up on the website by the end of the year, because we really like for people to to know here's another channel that's showing us the, these results. Again, we're not making any medical claims. We're just saying if your body is working in an optimum way, then you don't have to worry about uh, the congestion and the constriction. So that's coming up. And then um, uh, after the first of the year, I have a study with um, a uh, doctor uh, in Greenville, South Carolina, who is uh, going to be using thermal imaging. And um, this is Dr. Robert Schwartz, who's doing his very best to kind of herd the cats in the thermal imaging world. If you remember back when radiology started, okay, the, everybody's looking at the x-ray and looking at, uh, you know, those diagnostic films and saying, now, what are we looking at here? And uh, so that's kind of where thermal imaging is right now to create a standard where people can really look at that. But if you look at the thermal images that are on my website already, you can clearly see wherever it's red hot, that means um, an inflammatory process is at work there. And uh, so we wanna calm that down. So yeah, it's exciting. I, I, I love doing research. Very exciting and just really am amazing to see um, such profound results too. Yeah, that's really amazing. Well, I think uh, kind of the last area or question is just being involved in the sound therapy field as you have um, and seeing things develop and blossom and shift um, and being the founder of the International Sound Therapy Association. Um, 
what do you what do you feel is the kind of the trend that we're in with sound healing and sound therapy maybe just kind of a of your viewpoint of what the field the status of the field is right now Natalie, it's a pretty exciting time uh i remember when i started the international sound therapy association back in 2005 i um uh, you know, not too many people knew about sound. And there were sprinklings of it all throughout the world. But it was fairly unheard of. And then all of a sudden, it's like somebody flipped a light switch. And organizations such as uh, the International Sound Therapy Association began having classes. Uh, to help people, just e even to help people use it in their own home. And we had people give us feedback how just, you know, using a little metal singing bowl to calm everybody down at home before dinner so that it was not, you know, that has a profound effect when we're all gobbling our food. <laughs> That's an effect on the digestive system. But to calm down and to have nice conversation over a dinner so that was the benefit of, of teaching people how they, they um, use that in their everyday lives. And uh, we did outreach and, and went to schools and went to hospitals, went to cancer support um, groups. About that time was when, I don't know if you remember, Dr. Mitchell Gaynor had come out with his book. And uh, so all of the cancer support groups were, were saying, well, hey, how can we get this here? And, so we had a program that we called um, the ISTA Angels and the ISTA Ambassadors, where we would give them kind of a crash course on, on how to gently go as a group to these areas and uh, to these support groups and, and give people a, a therapeutic sound experience. And um, so, and then the whole sound bath uh, arm exploded where people were going particularly into yoga centers and uh, because they were receptive and everybody was already in Shavasana. So <laughs> it's a captive audience. <laughs> and um, so now we're at a, a point, I believe, where there's a lot of activity out there. And now I think it's time to take it to the next level, which um, is to marry all the hurting, all the wildcats out there, <laughs> all these various forms and traditions and marry it with those who actually have the wisdom. We've kind of got with, with, with the wildcats, uh, people go into a bookstore and they buy a bowl and they're out there banging on it and having a great time. But, um, we're not sure how therapeutic that is for anyone except for that person. <laughs> you know, are they back to being the two and three year old and say, oh, wow, I got a new drum. This is great. <laughs> and everybody else is gone, please, please stop. So I think now um, is the time that uh, maybe that we, we begin to marry and take it to a new professional level. And, you know, I know that you've interviewed a lot of the wisdom leaders on your podcast who have studied for years, who have researched and learned from the, those who were before us. And now it's time to take all that information and, and uh, create, I think, a standard. So it's very exciting. Is. all those climatic particles are up in the air. yeah yeah it's really all just vibrating buzzing around us ready for us to yeah so standards um integrity and, and realizing this is a responsibility this work so that education piece is, is so important the more uh, people are getting involved in, and jumping in maybe because it is a trend but still still a responsibility uh, that we have to uphold the importance of this work and the benefits of it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is important because, you know, I remember 
uh, one of the things that we included in our, our class is, um, you know, to not put the bowl too close to someone and sound it. And we had one person who was really difficult to get that point across. And after one particular sound event, a woman came up to us and said, I did not appreciate that because it had uh, exacerbated a previous injury where she was in scuba diving and came up too fast and the eardrum had suffered trauma. And so that sound reignited that stressor, that trauma in her. And so to be mindful of that is key. And so it's just simple things like this, you know, it's a, they're really great instruments, but they are not toys. And it's the same thing. I, I do this. I have the same thing with the AMI devices. Uh, you know, it's not a toy. You, you should not do all of those channels in one day. It's like, <laughs> I call it a, a, um, a fire hose into a champagne glass that is just too much sound for the body to take in. So, you know, let's calm everything down and, and just do one 30 minute session a day. And so it's, it's using that common sense that sometimes people, they're, they're still a toddler and their learning curve. Right. No, it is good to be playful and curious. Uh, but yes, there is, you're right. There is a, a serious to seriousness to this work. And even what you were saying about, you know, so striking a bull too close to someone or too loudly, um, you know, if one of the main benefits is relaxation, well, we just don't want to startle uh, people or, you know, jar, jar them. So just even um, that realization that the louder you play the frequency doesn't mean they're just going to get more of it. They're going to be more healed if you play it louder, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, wonderful. This has been really um, enlightening to hear more about your work and your, your background. And actually, if you think about where we started and, and where we've come to, that just your curiosity of sound and spirit and, and sim symbols and imagery how it's just beautifully led you uh, to your kind of goal of bringing in this work and these devices into people's homes. You know, it really kind of has led to exactly what you were dreaming and hoping of. So that's been beautiful to hear about your path. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I feel blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mandara. Thank you, Natalie. It's been a joy being with you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Sounds Heal Podcast, sponsored by the Ohm Shop and Spa. You can keep up to date on what's coming up next at soundshealstudio.com, on Facebook at Sounds Heal Studio, Instagram, Natalie Brown, Sounds Heal. And you can watch previous episodes as well as listen to some sound meditations on the YouTube channel, Sounds Heal Studio. Be well and stay tuned.